I'm gonna be thinking of you. Good night. Mwah. Hello everyone, I'm Mel. Welcome back to the channel. To the new and returning subscribers, it's wonderful to see you again. And thank you so much for the amazing support. To those who are lurking in the shadows, come on guys, do the right thing. Click the subscribe button below and join the happy family. So, today we'll be continuing with our discussion on mind games, but our conversation is going to be centered around the manipulation tactic that is known as hot and cold. I'm going to be answering some key questions surrounding this mind game. Namely, why do some people run hot and cold? How does one actually recognize this game? And last but not least, or should I say most importantly, what can one do about it if they find themselves caught in a hot and cold cycle with a partner or prospective love interest? Stay tuned. Like all mind games, the purpose of hot and cold is to gain control over another person and the relationship. It is an unending cycle of seduction, manipulation, retreat, and repetition. And without a doubt, a guaranteed crazy maker. If hot and cold is so detrimental to the mental and emotional well-being of the person on whom it's been done, then why do some people pull this crazy stunt? Firstly, some people are determined not to get hurt. This can be a consequence of a past hurt or disappointment. But what's important to understand is that when you want to have a healthy relationship with someone, and when it comes to love in general, you cannot afford to hide behind walls. With love, vulnerability is a must. You cannot just dip your toe in and expect to reap the full benefits. You need to really engage and put yourself out there. Secondly, it's a power move. And these hot and cold players use that power for their own benefit. To see how far they can push you. How far they can breach your boundaries before you buckle or put up some sort of blockade. For some people, it's not even that intricate. It has nothing to do with power. They are using you as a placeholder up until they get a better option. So what happens is when you want more or you demand more or for the relationship to progress, they will retreat. Then when you get fed up and you're heading out the door and they still haven't found someone else to fill that void, they're going to pursue. So you'll never know. It'll always be wishy-washy with such people. In less malicious circumstances, some people are trying to fair fair you, gauge your level of interest, you know, or maintain your interest up until a point when they're ready to be vulnerable with you. But come on, people. Surely there are better ways to maintain interest instead of playing games. Like, um, how about openly communicating where you are in life and what your expectations are? Now that we have an idea of why some people run hot and cold, how do we spot the hot and cold game. Hot and cold is characterized by two phases, the hot cycle and the cold cycle. In the hot cycle, the hot and cold players are captivating, attentive, sweet, thoughtful, wonderful communicators. You will feel like you've been cast in your own fairy tale. You know, they will call you, they will text you, Good morning, beautiful. How's your day going, handsome? I'm going to be thinking of you. Good night. Mwah. They will seem interested, like the ideal partner. And before you know it, you're planning a future with them. You can almost see yourself introducing them to your closest friends and family. You're already picking up baby names because you know in your heart of hearts, that children with this person are gonna be so cute. You've got everything planned out. You've mapped, up, mapped out an amazing future with this person. But there's a catch. It's so easy to get carried away with these people because they are blowing hot. They're presenting themselves in the best possible light, okay? And one thing I've noticed is that hot and cold players 
anomaly chameleons. They're good at anticipating your needs and adapting to that so that they come off as perfect. And they will be perfect up until the other shoe drops. The cold cycle happens unexpectedly. Suddenly, this person turns to ice and there's nothing you can do to make them melt. They withdraw, become distant and indifferent. They stop communicating like they used to. Stop picking your calls, replying your messages, and you're left wondering what you did wrong. You find yourself demoted from the position of cherished and adored to rejected and ignored. This is a shock to the system. And this is where the craziness starts, the obsession. The world becomes a cold and barren place. And this person takes center stage in your thoughts. You find yourself replaying every interaction you had with them, trying to figure out the exact moment or the exact thing that you said that made them turn on you, that made them turn cold on you. But guess what? You'll never figure it out because it's got nothing to do with you. Ideally, in the situation when a prospective lover or partner has turned cold on you, it's best to count your losses, pack up, and move. Go. But hope is hard to kill, isn't it? So what normally happens after the cold cycle when you have picked up your little heart and low-key accepted that you've been rejected? This person will surface and they'll want back into your life. If you allow yourself to be pulled back in, the hot phase will begin again. But be warned, it will only be a matter of time before they freeze you out again. And the thing about the cycle, the hot and cold cycle, is that the more you participate in it, the harder it is to break away from this person who's perpetrating this injustice against you. So what is the takeaway from all this? Hot and cold games have nothing to do with you. So if you, if you find yourself caught up in that cycle, you need to one, identify the pattern, two, act. I know I spoke about taking action. So how do you handle a hot and cold play? One, confront them. I know I say that a lot, but you need to question their behavior as honestly as you can. If they respond in a um, dismissive, hostile, or bad way, then run for the hills. Just let it go. You will never have a good relationship with this person and they will definitely waste your time. On the flip side, if they acknowledge their bad behavior and are bothered or remorseful about how it made you feel, there may be hope for the relationship, but it's at your own risk. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Two, don't try and make sense of the situation. There is no closure to be gotten, no reasonable explanation to be obtained from a hot and cold player. Stop wasting your friend's time trying to psychoanalyze and rationalize bad behavior. Three, shut the door. When you recognize that someone is playing with you, toying with your emotions, it becomes your responsibility to safeguard your own best interests. Don't allow someone who's put you through multiple cycles of hot and cold to continue to wreak havoc on your emotions and mental well-being. Chances are this person is never going to change. They do not have the skill sets to be in a relationship and they are committed to staying safe in love, so they will never play fair. Shut the door. So in conclusion, if you ever find yourself caught in a hot and cold cycle with someone, always remember that you have the power to stop the game. You can make a decision to stop playing. You are not a toy. You're not a clown. So do not allow someone else's child to treat you as such. Don't give them that kind of satisfaction. Evict them from your life and create room for people who want the same things that you want. A loving and healthy relationship. We have come to the end of our video for today. If it was helpful, 
insightful, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell below so that you are informed every time I upload a new video. Till the next time that we meet on the internet, Musa Nyasha.